Ian for being willing to uh, to sit with me this morning, and I promise to do my best to give us a great uh, a great uh, schmooze, a great uh, class. Okay, so I've spoken about the topic of self defense in the past, and today I want to do something a little bit unique. What I want to do is I want to make this an interactive discussion where we each discuss what we believe ought to be the judgment in a certain scenario. Has anybody ever heard of caving in, in your Splonkin. dictionary? Splonking. Splonking or caving. I think they are interchangeable. Okay? For those of you that have never heard of either of those terms, it is a sport which involves digging a tunnel into the ground for the sake of either creating a cave or discovering different artifacts or different items or minerals, etc. How do you spell Splunking? Who? How do you spell How do you sp spell it? S-P-L-E-U-K-I-N-G, something like yeah, that. Yeah, but that doesn't involve digging. That just won't just go in. Walking the cable in, yeah. is already Checking existing. it out. Yeah. S-P-E-L-E-U-K-I-N-G. Okay. Um, <laughs> so here is, the, here is my challenge to you. Okay? But I want it some kind of sport. It, it's a, it's a kind of sport, it's an activity. Yeah. So usually it's done with a team. Now I want each and every one of you to imagine that you are the leader of a caving expedition. We're calling it caving. U N K or L O N K. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay? But let's say you are the leader of this caving expedition. Okay? So what that means is you have let's say 10 people working with you. You are at the edge of a, of a site, and you are starting to cave. You are digging a tunnel. Now, hours later, as you start digging, you notice that there is water that is starting to rush in from the lakefront, which is near the site where you have begun caving. Again, you are the leader of the expedition, so you are the one that is calling the shots, that's making the decisions. Now, what happens? As you're caving, you're digging, it's pitch black except for the opening from which you came in, which is now gushing with water, so much so that you do not have the ability to physically exit the cave from where you came. The good news is, is that you've dug so far that at the end of the cave, there is a little bit of a light and there's a, there's a, there's a hole such that if you were to keep digging, you can make it out safely to the other, to the other end. Okay? So you're, okay? So now the question is like this. Unfortunately, one of the members of your expedition, we'll call him Bob, is a heavy set fellow. The heavy set fellow. He's so excited at the sight of this opening at the other end of the tunnel that he runs towards the hole and boom, gets himself stuck in the hole. <laughs> it's like so it's really you, intense. it's your 10 people, and it's our dear friend, Bob. Now here's my challenge to you, okay? You are the decision maker. You only have one thing at your disposal. How and, you doing, man? Hey, long time no see, how are you? Shabbat 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 you have one thing at your disposal. You have a stick of dynamite. <laughs> All right? So not to make this a gory situation, but you now have a decision to make. You now have a decision to make. If you do nothing, the water that is rushing in is going to drown all of you. Okay? Now, when we have an ethical dilemma, especially one that is oriented around Judaism, we have to work in absolutes, meaning this is a constant issue that sometimes I have when trying to bring a point in Jewish law is that people will say, but Rabbi, the water may stop. But Rabbi, maybe you forgot that you do have another item at your disposal. When I, the Rabbi, am presenting you with an ethical dilemma, I want you to try your best to um, focus on the absolute variables that I am giving you to the exclusion of everything else so that we can highlight the point that we are trying to extract from this idea. So you have to take it as a given that you are in fact in a cave, that there is in fact water rushing into the cave on such a speed and ferocity that you cannot make your way out that direction. 
that there is a hole on the other end of the cave that you've dug and that your friend Bob, who's part of your expedition, has locked himself into this hole and is the only thing blocking you between life and death. Now, what I want to do, and I haven't done this before, and so I hope it's going to work. Uh, I need a piece of paper. Can, are you able, um, my friend, uh, want any, or can I get a piece of paper? Okay. The way I see it, there are a few options. You are each the leader of your expedition. Now, what you can do is you can either, with a stick of dynamite, you can kill Bob. We'll That's going to, okay? Let's call it killing Bob. That's option number one. Option number two is not kill Bob. And we will, and obviously there's ramifications. Option number three is give Bob the dynamite. Okay? Give Bob the dynamite. Now, these are. Right? These are, these are difficult scenarios. They definitely raise uh, emotions, right? Nobody wants to be in such a compromising situation. But these situations undoubtedly occur. I was reading uh, uh, a book about World War II, and it's amazing because uh, I, saw, I, was, I was following a Facebook feed. I, uh, uh, you know Nir Moriah, right? So, so he, 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 was, he was commenting about whether World War II whether Hitler started the war in a quest for world domination primarily, or was it primarily for the destruction of, of the Jews? And it's not a fun argument to get involved in, but uh, I was backing up Nir. You can argue with me, but I was backing up my friend Nir, who was arguing that really it was more about destroying the Jews than it was about world domination. And so I even brought him a proof from this book, which is not about the Holocaust. It's a book about World War II. It's called World War II by the famous author Martin Gilbert. If any of you are, are interested in history, this is a book that really goes through all of the details about the Holocaust, about the war. Now, ironically, as much as it's a book about the war and the details of the battles and the generals and the fights and the locations, not one page of this book does not include the atrocities of what was done by the Nazis because it was so built into their, to their, to their system. And part of my argument with him in the, in, in the Facebook feed was that towards the end of the war, when things were really in the balance, Hitler made vital decisions to divert essential uh, uh, war resources, trains and, uh, and, and people, man labor, towards the camps rather than sending them to the, to the front lines. Why would he do that if his primary concern was the domination of the world? Okay, put that, putting that story aside, one of the tragic scenarios of the war was when the Nazis would appoint a Jewish leader to administer a ghetto, and the Nazis, when they were ready to start deporting Jews to the camps, they would go and get the Jews to do their dirty work, and they would tell the leaders of the ghettos, can you give us, we want 20,000 Jews, and you decide who to give. So now, how is the ghetto leader supposed to decide who gets to go, who gets to go, who doesn't get to go? Do we send the elderly? Do we send the children? Do we send the 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 middle aged? Who do, who do we send? Just trying to show you, even in, in 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 military, when you're in the in the heat of battle, who do you save? So these are very very difficult questions, but these are questions that the Torah asks us to uh, to analyze. So going back to our scenario. But you know, the point is this, that if you get yourself in a position when you work for the enemy, for the Nazis, you know, there's no ethical decision. You should kill yourself. I mean, you cannot work for the Nazis and make this kind of decision. Right. It's unethical to begin with. Okay. So there's no correct answer. Okay. That's one approach. I don't know if all of these leaders had a choice in the matter when they were appointed. It could be that the Nazis told them, you have to take this position or, or, or bust, you know. But okay, I, I got. You get killed. Could, you cannot make a decision like this. But maybe they don't know what at, at that time how deep this was. Right, right. Okay, so you are you are the leader of the expedition. You are the one that has to make a decision. Now, I don't want anybody to feel at all embarrassed because there is no wrong answer. This is all Torah. Torah is each of us together pulling in our ideas and our opinions, trying to back them. 
and for the sake of trying to arrive at a truth. Obviously, after we go around the table, I am going to draw upon some Torah sources to try to shed some light on what ought to be the decision. So, um, yes. Bob going to die by drowning also? Oh, thank you. That's a very good point. Um, Bob is facing outside. Okay, so Bob is safe if nothing is done. Now, if you kill Bob, please take my word for it, you will all live. If you do not kill Bob, please take my word for it, you will all die. If you give Bob the dynamite, we're not sure what he's going to do. But these are your three choices that I'm giving you that I want you to work with. And do not feel at all embarrassed to give me any opinion of any of these three. Okay, Ellie. What do we do? Do we kill Bob? Do we not kill Bob? Do we give him the dynamite? I just have a quick question. So yes. We dig in. We hit, a, we hit a water source. It starts to fill the cave, but there's another... There's exit. another exit. We go forward. So how's the cave building up water if there's two points of exit for the water? No, oh. so... I'm sorry. I'm just, sorry. Just, <laughs> let's say... Let's say... Let's say uh, you just got, you just got to get creative. Let's say it's a small lake and you started caving under the lake and you, you dug under so that there's no water and then... Happens? No, you just, no, you just have to get. You just have to imagine. Imagine such a scenario. Imagine you're in a. Forget about the scenario. You're in a cave with water rushing in, and there's light at the end of the tunnel, and there's a, and there's a hole, basically. But Bob is Bob plugging the hole. Bob is. Thank you. Bob, Bob is plugging the hole. That's <laughs> that's that's. that's, that's point for the water. <laughs> you can. Bob is the plug. Bob is, Bob is 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 what's preventing you. Why don't there other choices after you decide the first choice? Making it sound like there's no other choices. I these the these point. are the choices that, that we're dealing yeah, with. There could be choices after you make that decision. What, such as? Well, if you don't kill Bob, maybe there's a way to dynamite behind you so you block the water. Okay, I mean, so, oh, so, so, so for the sake of the discussion, I am avoiding any other possible, meaning, meaning you're right. There are so many other things. There are so many other things that could be going on. But for the sake of for the sake of highlighting the point in question, we are focusing on on those absolutes. Ellie, I'm just gonna say kill him. I'm utilitarian. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> no. No. He's okay. So Ellie says kill Bob. Alan. I kill Bob also. Alan says kill Bob. Not a happy decision, but you have. You know, two lives, yours and another. Okay, we're, we're going to get there. Okay. My goal here is to create a war between all of you. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, doctor, okay. Howard says, do not kill Bob. Ashley. I think it's Bob's decision. Give Bob the dynamite? Ashley says, kill Bob, give Bob the dynamite. Okay. What's your name again? First name? Eileen. Eileen. Eileen, you said? Like a uh, mother, like daughter? Okay. Um... <laughs> Okay, Eileen. Um, Susan. Susan? I would, have to, I would have to ask Bob what he thought and then take a vote. Okay, but that's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, you kill Bob, you don't kill Bob, or you give Bob the dynamite. You're the decision maker. <laughs> kill Bob, don't kill Bob, give Bob the dynamite. Kill Bob. Kill Bob. <laughs> Susan. Okay, and now we have Lo uh, Lori. Lori. Lori says, give, give Bob the dynamite. Okay, we have, what's your, what's your name again? Don't kill Leon. Don't Leon. Kill Bob. Leon says, don't kill Bob. I would just give him a good kick in the butt. Okay. <laughs> okay, Leon says, okay. What's your name? Barbara. Barbara. Kill Bob. Barbara says, kill Bob. Okay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. How does killing Bob get him out of the way? Because when you blow someone up with dynamite, the hole opens up. He no longer is plugging the hole. So you're not just killing him. You're dynamiting him. Well, yeah, you have a, you have a dynamite. Yes. You, you are only killing him with the dynamite. Okay? So what's your name? Anne. Anne? Do you kill Bob? Do you not kill Bob? Or do you give him the dynamite? Ask him. What? Give him the dynamite. Okay, so that's Anne. You can't affect my decision now. I already made it. <laughs> okay. Uh, ben. Give him the dynamite. Okay. Lauren. Give him the dynamite. Lauren. Okay, what's your name again? Melissa? Kill him. Kill him. Enjoy okay. Lauren. Melissa. <laughs> okay, remind me your first name again? Tony. Tony. Give him the dynamite. Tony. Okay. And? Give him the dynamite. Give him the dynamite. Okay. Um, the super um, Har Harvey. Give him the dynamite. Okay, RV, give him time. Okay, so now can I ask a favor? Can I have every? Can I have 
Ashley, Eileen, Lori, Ann, Ben, Lauren, Tony, and Harvey, stand on this wall, please. <laughs> That's what you get for choosing that. I know. <laughs> Can I have? Uh, you're going to have to get over here now. Okay. Come on, Ashley. I can defend it. I'll be the only one. Can I make the kill ones over here? <laughs> no, Leon also did. Okay, Howard, can you go stand next to Leon? Can we have Ellie, Alan, Susan, Barbara, and Melissa standing on this side of the room, please? Okay. Now, I would like to give each of the three groups exactly one minute to do two things. To discuss amongst yourselves why you voted this way. And then I'm going to ask each group to choose one representative that is going to argue their point with the other groups with the hope of either convincing the other group of why you're right or just bringing out the point for all of us to hear of why you ought to kill Bob, not kill Bob, or why you ought to give him the dynamite. You have, let's give you two minutes, starting right now. Okay. So, I say, is your blood better than other perfumes? So, he did by plugging a hole. He made that choice. Whatever is happening in this, in this schedule. What was so, if he was so excited that he jumped into the hole, he may have that same passion for the decision. It doesn't matter. He's a human being. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I don't mean nominating him. I don't think it's a I can't. I 
like Rob's life. I can't. I can't do it. I don't want to be the Okay, choose a representative. You have 20 seconds left. <laughs> Okay, everybody find your seats. Please stay seated near where you are standing. Please do not go back to your original seats. Do, do not go back to your original seats. Please stay seated where you were. Thank you. Can you pass the coffee bonds? I'm there we go. Okay, I'm sorry to be mixing everything up like this, but all is fair in love and war. Okay. All right. So, on my right, on my right, we have the givers of the dynamite. On my left, we have the killers of Bob. The Bob killers. And straight ahead of me, we have the good Samaritans. The do not kill Bob. Who is your representative on team Give Bob the Dynamite? Dr. Harvey. Harvey, you have one and a half minutes to give us a case for why to give Bob the dynamite. Well, we don't feel that uh, we're entitled to be murdered. We uh, feel that the Torah tells us uh, you don't uh, go killing someone unless they're threatening your life, unless uh, it's a question of idol worship or being forced to leave the whole uh, concept of Kiddush Hashem. And so that we feel that uh, Bob, uh, in his glory and rush and passion, ran for the exit, not thinking that he was going to cause any harm, and therefore, uh, with that uh, passion, Lori also made this point, that uh, we should give him the dynamite and let him decide, and uh, hopefully uh, he won't uh, blow up, but he might, but uh, in that way, he leaves this world uh, in a heroic uh, mood, and uh, we can't justify killing him. Okay. You, my friends, obviously disagree with Dr. Rosenstock. And so, who is your representative and how are you going to first argue your case and then try to answer uh, Harvey's uh, claims? Okay. The uh, Torah tells us that, um, or the uh, uh, Talmud tells us that when, if two people are in the desert and there's one canteen of water and one guy owns it. He should drink the water and save his life because there isn't enough water to save both of them. He shouldn't give it to his friend and he shouldn't share it with them so they both die. So we go along with, with that. Um, uh, our life is, is important to us and we have the, if we have the choice, Bob goes. Can I add to that? Yes, Can please. Speaker? So it wasn't just that we were saving that we were killing Bob is that we were saving nine other people, nine other souls. Yeah. Okay. So the main argument from this group is that you, it's, it's, you, you're allowed to kill for the sake of saving many. Okay. You can kill, okay, to save many. Yeah. So now it, it's not murder because murder is okay. uh, and unjustified then, uh, killing. This is justified. Okay. okay, this is considered justified. Okay, justified killing. Right. According to Team Give Bob the Dynamite, it is never justified uh, to kill if the uh, individual that you're considering killing is not himself a criminal. Well, we considered that water idea, and we felt that the dynamite is the water. Ah. Okay. All right. Well, thankfully, we have two... Uh, very illustrious water. individuals water. who would like to argue uh, that one should, we should not kill Bob, even if that means that we will all die. Who is the representative on this team? Leon. Leon, will you enlighten us, please? Well, I would, I think we would probably agree that this is, if we kill Bob, that's going to be a murder. And the reason why you can only kill in self-defense when somebody else is actively trying to kill you. Now, Bob, uh, of course, it's guilty because he ate too much, but to, that's not enough to kill somebody. I mean, he need maybe give him a kick in the butt or something, but I don't think that's a, that's justifiable to just kill somebody, and especially another Jewish person, uh, for no really actively for, uh, active fault of him. In other words, he didn't do anything actively to 
uh, attack somebody or show any kind of aggression or, intent or evil intention in there. So if Leon's making a innocent person would be killed. Leon's making a pretty strong point. Can is I that reply? is that of course you can reply. Is that is that Leon <laughs> Uh, Leon is arguing Bob didn't do anything intentional to try to kill anyone. Okay, he's blocking the hole. You might end up dying. Whoever said that that should allow you to murder someone? And now we have Eli Satsoglu who has a counter. <laughs> no, he, he did accept it because he chose to go into this cave with nine other people. Cave exploring is dangerous. And if you're gonna deal with water in caves, it's even more dangerous. So he accepted that there is a risk and he chose to save himself before other people. This isn't like you're on the Titanic and you're just randomly doing something. You chose to do a dangerous sport and you chose to choose yourself to get out first and now you're hindering other people. So I don't believe that he's innocent. So here's my question is that if, I don't, I don't, we don't, we don't <laughs> consider at this point his having run into the hole as being an act of malicious intent. It could have just been fear. But it could have been, he wants to live, risk. he's running. Mm -hmm. So when you have throngs of people that are escaping, let's say a shooter, are you going to penalize someone for being the first one out of a school that's got a shooter in it? I'm not saying you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing a counter argument. Um, Tony. Tony. And, uh, his intentions is irrelevant because he created a situation that needs to be resolved. And it's a decision that he has to make at that time to whether or not to destroy himself to save the other people or not. And that's why you say give him the dynamite. Yes. Right. Um, Eileen. I think it's Hashem's decision. So we shouldn't do anything. No, I, I agree to leave him the choice, but I think in the end... Do you realize that you are not leaving it up to Hashem <laughs> by giving him the dynamite? If you believed that you should leave it to Hashem, then you should... I would say you have to agree with Howard and Leon because it, you are doing an act by giving uh, Bob the dynamite. But you're playing the, Hashem if you... No, you're not. I, I would say like Leon said, personally, there is a difference between actively killing someone and non-actively killing someone. So if you are choosing to hold on to the dynamite, you're not playing God. You're you're acting within the confines of the situation that you find yourself in. That's that's what I think Leon's argument would be. I want to hear from Dr. Schreiber. No, we had the same decision. We both agreed that he would speak for us, but I felt the same way. But you so you feel the same way. I think it's unethical to take someone's life. Seriously. Okay. Okay. So so does anyone have anything else to to add? Yes. Um, you know the I want to answer to both groups in here. Well, poor judgment and some kind of implication of somebody's fault, whatever, is not enough to uh, to kill somebody. I mean, this is not just you made a poor judgment, you wear bad style clothes, or maybe you're rude and took fat. That's not, that's not sufficient reason to kill somebody. And then also giving somebody a dynamite not killing him well what actually it is it's an invitation to commit suicide and that is also against judaism so that that other decision of giving him a dynamite is also uh, unethical okay um susan okay so if you're saying it's unethical to kill Bob, but then you're all, you're all committing suicide. Because not necessarily. Know. There are always other choices. No, he said there's no other choice. There's no other choice. He's not allowing that, but there are other choices. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. You're not committing suicide by refusing to violate Jewish law. But you are because you're, you're supposed to save yourself. So. Yeah, but, not saving yourself so, at the expense of another innocent person. But, yeah, but, but he's not innocent. innocent. He chose if to be there. Leader, then you're making a choice. For but you're not allowing him to have the potentiality to decide whether or not to correct okay, well, his mistake. This isn't like a hold up at the wall. You're just like picking up two percent. You're taking that potentiality and making a choice. So here we are. Here we are at a standstill. Here we we seem to have a dispute amongst our friends as to whether. Uh, not killing Bob would constitute suicide or not? Or would we say that killing Bob when our lives are on the line would not be constituted as murder? These are fundamental questions in Judaism. Dr. Winters, help us out. We're not actually killing Bob. That's not our intent. We're putting the dynamite uh, in, in the dirt to blow open the hole. You're, kill you're, you're blowing up Bob, Dr. Winters. Well, Bob is dying as a byproduct, but that's not the <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we love you, Dr. Winters. Because we're in, you know, it's, it's like people building uh, a structure. Where's your art killing, you know, the, the builders know that, that they're, they're not killing you. There's you something in Judaism called, there's minutes. something in Judaism called a psik reshe. Has anybody ever heard of psik reshe? I've heard of it. You, do you want to tell us what it is? No, you tell us. Psik reshe is if there's an act that you are going to do that is with 100% certainty going to result 100% in a collateral damage, you are considered to be doing that collateral damage. And so if you're blowing up the hole, happens to be Bob's in the hole, you're killing Bob. <laughs> Dr. Winters? No, that, I don't agree with that, because that's the same okay. as... Uh, the He's two allowed. People, two people in the desert and one drinking the water. You know, don't there's a, the There's a difference between drinking the water that will result in, in him dying versus me blowing up the individual. When I'm drinking the water, it's not my drinking of the water that's killing him, it's starvation or dehydration. I'm causing him to eventually die, but I'm not actively killing him. Very big difference between actively killing someone and passively killing someone. Yes. If you give him the dynamite, you're not killing him. In Correct. Decision. That's right. So you're not killing him and you're not committing suicide either. And you're that's right, but you're giving him the dynamite. Yeah. If the ethical correct Before decision, <laughs> if the ethically correct decision is for him to live, and by you giving him the dynamite, he ends up dying, you had a part to play in that. Oh, but he had to decide. That's correct, but you had to decide to give him the dynamite. Oh, so, so Lauren, I'm not, I'm not making so a decision. Wait, 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 I'm, so just, I'm just giving the counter argument. You said that you gave him the option. Drown also. If we don't kill Bob, then we will, in fact, drown. And he will, and Bob will drown. Okay, are we ready for the next step? Yes. Okay, you are going to go crazy with this next step. I am about to throw you each a curveball. Okay, so who said kill Bob? You guys, what if I were to tell you, and don't give me the immediate answer, I'm going to give you all a new two minutes to stand up and discuss amongst yourselves. Do not react to the following curveball. To the team that says kill Bob, what if I were to add a curveball that Bob, in fact, ran into the hole intentionally because he is very, very angry with you? He does not like you very much at all, in fact. He's an enemy of yours. He wants you to die. He ran into the hole on purpose. You have two minutes to discuss. Before you go over two minutes, I'm going to discuss Howard and Leon. Howard and Leon, you said do not kill Bob. Why? Because killing is never justified. Okay. What if I were to well, tell you... I didn't say that. Wait. I said that in this particular case, he didn't have malicious intention. And so it's not going to be considered self-defense. Okay. I'm, I'm going to switch things up here for a second. Okay. I'm going to switch things up. You said kill Bob. Okay. To save the many. Instead of that he ran in there on purpose... Okay, what if he holds the cure to cancer? Okay, hold that thought. Oh, he is the good. only individual who holds the cure to cancer. You said do not kill Bob. What if Bob ran in there intentionally? Okay, Bob ran in intentionally. Okay, and then lastly, for the group that said give Bob the dynamite, what if he is going to die anyways? Meaning instead of his mouth facing the outside, Let's say his mouth is facing the inside of the cave where the water is rushing in. I'm going to repeat, and then you all have two minutes, okay? So for the team that said, kill Bob, right? And presumably your reason for wanting to kill Bob is to save the many. What if, um, what if Bob holds the cure to cancer? For Howard and Leon, you said do not kill Bob. What if Bob ran in there intentionally because he doesn't like you? And according to the group that said, Give him the dynamite. What if he's going to die anyways? You have two minutes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise, discuss amongst yourselves, and you have two minutes. Whether he's going to die or not, because it would still be the same thing if he decides. If he's going to die anyway, then you might as well blow up the hole. Yeah, exactly. So the chance of other people. So you still have a chance of... Correcting the energy. Well, he's only going to die anyway because you're going to die the same way. Yeah, but now everybody else is going to say except him. I know, but everybody else is going to say except him. Well, the other side of that point is that you're going to die anyway. Well, the other side of that point is that I still stand up where I'm at. And I'm going to say that 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 I
things that he made a mistake. So he could have Yeah, I think Bob's a good person. He just got excited. I think Bob is a good person. He just got excited. When Cora did, he didn't realize he was going to be but also, you know, there were people in the story where Rabbi Kiva, I think it was, where he was a tortured at the very end of his life, and he actually started to smile and happy because he gave him the last opportunity to do this by trying to out. So if we kill him, we deny him. So my opinion is that he said, everybody can say this one. Okay. Not to succeedly, I'll name you. No, uh, in that case, <laughs> where, where he dies, or but you know that the really yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, okay, so we'll or just assume that he, 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 he ran into a cave uh, because he wanted 30 to seconds to left. But he realized the full of purpose. Now is the time. Well, no, because he needed everybody. He wants everybody to die. That's my. If he was malicious, he would say that. Okay, everybody, please be seated. Everybody, please be seated. Okay, so now, my friends, this is where we have. Da -da 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 I'm sorry? Can we ask for clarification? Okay. I think we, Howard and I, didn't. You were the group that. You were the group. The same thing. You were the group that voted to kill Bob. No. No, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. To not kill Bob. No. You were the group that voted to not kill Bob. Right. What I did was I threw you a curveball to see if you would maintain your opinion well, or change it. Let me just finish, Leon. Curveball. And so the curveball that I that I changed the story for you was right. that he in fact ran into the uh, uh, hole intentionally. For what purpose? You didn't say why. Because he doesn't like you. Yeah. Not to kill us? Yes, to kill you. To kill yes. Uh, to kill you. That's my okay, so I now, before we get to your group, now that I've thrown all of you these curveballs, I want to know if you've changed your mind, and if yes or no, why or why not? Who is the representative of this group? So this is the group that said, kill Bob. No. Yes. This is the group that said, kill Bob, and we have now discovered that Bob is the sole human being that holds the cure for cancer. Do you still maintain that we kill Bob? Yes, each of our lives is more important than the lives of, of, of the people we don't know. Strangers. Sorry, not, not that he, uh, so you say still, still kill Bob? Yeah. Okay, why? None of us have cancer, none of our families have cancer, and someone who, you know, all the multitude of people who have cancer, they're strangers, but we gotta take care of ourselves. Does anyone have a question for Dr. Winter's well, uh, approach? Yes. We don't know. Somebody who survives that cave may have the potential. Maybe Hashem gives him or her that gift, you know, of all of a sudden being able to solve, you know, the... Not just okay. Well, I mean, let's be pragmatic. People okay. who are doing research don't work alone, so he's part of a team. So he's not the uh, only person. We are violating the law of absolutes. <laughs> <laughs> I am the dictating <laughs> rabbi who am... I am telling you an absolute that he, in fact, holds the cure it for cancer, which would, yeah, in no. fact, <laughs> save millions. millions of people. So now, if your whole argument originally was that we kill Bob to save the many, who's the many? The 10 of us in the cave. Then logic would have dictated that you would have changed your theory to not kill Bob for the sake of saving the even greater number of people who are dying of cancer. Yeah, but is yeah. your absolute that there will never be another person or 
This is the current reality. Well, the current reality is we're stuck in a cave and we're all going to die. So I don't care about 20 years down the road. All souls are divine, and we don't have the right to say that this one person's soul is better than other people's souls. So the fact that he has this or that wonderful thing about him is irrelevant. So regardless, you think Bob should never be killed? Should not be killed? No, he should not be killed. Then we are guilty of murder. Okay, what would you say about Leon and Howard's case? And I want to hear what you think as well. Should he have run inside intentionally? You originally said we do not kill Bob. Presumably, why did you say do not kill Bob? Because it's wrong to kill. It is never okay to kill. What about if he ran no, in there? No, we didn't say that. Okay. We said, well, that's not what we said. We said that it is wrong to kill, that will be a murder to kill an innocent person. Okay. That's what we're saying. Okay. I didn't ever say it's always wrong to kill. So now, what, would, what do you say now? Well, now we both agree he should be killed. He should be killed. Do you agree? <laughs> yes, because I would now be he's a murderer. Now he's a murderer. Okay. Yes. Okay. He is attempting on everybody else's everybody. life on purpose. And so in self-defense, you're allowed to kill him. Okay. What about the group here, that which was given a curveball that now instead of him uh, facing the outside, now he's going to die anyways. Do you still give him the dynamite? Yes. Yes, we still give him. We don't, that doesn't change our position. We still give him the dynamite. He makes the choice. And if he decides not to blow himself up, then God will take over from there. Okay. So he developed a cure for cancer, and he chose to go into that's a only dangerous in, fort. That's only in your scenario. Yes. And he chose to go into a dangerous fort without telling anyone this cure for cancer. That seems even more selfish. So, so he didn't get <laughs> Eleni, Unless he had an epiphany. Uh, uh, Eleni while refuses to live in the absolute. Yes. Okay, as an absolute, if we give him the dynamite, and he kills himself, uh, and he blows up the dynamite, and he, like Rabbi Akiva, is dying in the service of Hashem, and it's a big mitzvah for him, and he's going through the heaven and everything. One but second. Is that if he's going to live? If he doesn't blow it up, then he is guilty of murdering himself and all of us, and then he has a black mark on his soul, and we're still innocent. Either way. <laughs> we're just dead. Yeah, but we're dead. Yeah, we go to we're court. innocent, though. We're not so we're innocent. Oh, uh, was he just going to be reincarnated? <laughs> right? <laughs> it was all Hashem's will anyway. He dies. So okay. we're just the vehicle. So now... <laughs> Okay, so now now we are ready to discuss. Now we are ready to discuss the Torah. Okay, so my friends, the Torah is in fact mostly in line with the doctor and Leon. And the reason is because you are right that murder is never okay. However, there are times where murder is okay. And we know that the famous terminology of the individual who is allowed to be killed in, in, in an act of self-defense is the term ro Dave, the pursuer. What is the reason why a pursuer is allowed to be killed? If the reason why I'm not allowed to kill a regular individual is because of the infinite value of that individual, well, does infinite value of the individual change just because someone is threatening, just hands down for the next two minutes, okay? Right? Just because the individual's uh, uh, is pursuing you or perhaps killing you? And let me throw you another question. If I'm allowed to kill a pursuer, is there a difference whether that pursuer has malicious intent or not? Does the person have to be coming at me with a knife or a gun for me to be allowed to kill him? Or even if he's killing me like Bob, or can I consider Bob to be someone who's, who's killing me? Does Bob have to have intentionally run into the hole for me to be allowed to kill him? Or even if he did not? So I want to share with you a Gemara which discusses this idea, and this is in the tractate Sanhedrin, okay, where it discusses a person who is uh, invading your property through a tunnel, ironically. I didn't know, by the way. I didn't prepare the whole tunnel uh, analogy. It just happens to be that it's a tunnel. So a person is coming at you through a tunnel for the sake of stealing, not necessarily to kill you. He's coming to steal from you. Okay, so the Mishnah says, Nidon al Shem Sofo, he can be judged based on his eventuality. What does that mean? The Talmud explains that you're actually, what the Mishnah means to teach me is that you're actually allowed to kill this intruder. I think it's known here as like the Texas law, right? Right? You are allowed to kill him. But wait, Rabbi, he's not coming to kill you. He's coming to steal your car. He's coming to steal your television. Why are you allowed to kill him? Is so, it in the day or is it at night? Yeah, it depends. It, 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 it really is any time. 
Okay, but here's the question. Because it's a tunnel, it doesn't matter whether... It doesn't have to be a tunnel. No. The commentaries explain it could be through your door, through your window. But what's the reason? The reason is as follows. The reason is because there is a general rule that a human being will likely resist, okay, an attempt at stealing his property. What that means is, is that if I'm the homeowner, the natural inclination for me as a human being is not to stand idly by if I know that my property is being compromised. I'm gonna do something. And guess who knows this fact? The intruder. The intruder knows when he's coming to steal from me that the owner of whatever item he's coming to steal from is likely to resist or react or confront. And therefore, when the intruder is coming, he's coming prepared for that potential eventuality. What, how does he come prepared for that eventuality? It could be a gun. It could be a knife. He's prepared to kill me, anticipating a potential confrontation. Says the Torah, I don't have to not kill this person because I'm not allowed to kill in the Torah. If there's a very good likelihood that he's going to kill me, anticipating my reaction, I am human. I cannot sub, um, submit my uh, uh, instinct to react to my property because it's wrong to kill a human being. If he's coming to kill me, or he's coming prepared for an, prepared for an, for an eventual confrontation that would involve him killing me, I'm allowed to, to go ahead and kill him first. Preemptive strike. Preemptive strike. That's what the Torah says. Yes. No. Theirs was that, the only that's condition a different you presented. Scenario, because that yeah. would be me and Bob only. Correct. Okay. Correct. So lines, You're right. Correct. I, I haven't, I haven't, yeah, I haven't yet addressed. So if you imagine that you're with just your family, yeah. you know, and they're your children, grandchildren, I think the decision would be different. It'd be a, it'd be a lot harder. So and theirs is the only position yeah. that you allowed for that to exist. That's why theirs is more accurate. Right. Because theirs is the only one with the intent. Right. So what, what, but what I, what I was going to say is, is that even in the case where he does not run into the uh, <laughs> hole intentionally, Okay, I would still say that based on the Torah, he is Just not... Just because he's negligent doesn't mean that his, the effect of his actions causes the same effect that his intents were to kill everybody that was in the camp. Exactly. And so, therefore, he would not be considered a rodef. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. What were you so, about to say? Well, exactly what he yeah. said. Don't, the only time you made them the pursuer in their case, in their second case. That was one of the four times that you're justified to murder right. someone. Right. So, See, but like I somebody still disagree. breaks in, I'll do but anything to protect my family and my property. Is naive and does not anticipate that he's going to run into somebody and didn't bring a knife or a gun. He thought he could just sneak in, take the stuff, and take it. The out. homeowner has no clue. He doesn't have to take a. You know, okay, so there's a there's a well, there's a lot of different details. You yes. first of all, first of all, you're only allowed to kill the intruder as he's on the way to steal or or potentially kill you the second he's on his way out the torah says as clear as it's as what when it's as clear as day so to speak that this person is no longer a threat or he's on his way away from you you know that your life is no longer in danger you are the murderer should you kill him so you can't shoot him in the back you cannot shoot him in the back you are not allowed to shoot him in the back so is he the property right you let him go but Sorry? He's if he's on his way in and this confrontation can still occur, then that is where the Torah says you're allowed to kill him first. Okay? Can you shoot to harm? Just so Not only shoot can you shoot to harm, thank you, Lori, for reminding me, that's the next uh, uh, obligation. You have to try to injure him before killing him. If you have an opportunity to maim him or to injure him uh, uh, and or knock him out of the of the fight uh, instead of killing him, you are obligated to do so. Okay? You are you aren't you're not jumping to kill the guy, but your life does come first yes. in this situation. Your life does come first. And you're right, Dr. Winters, we learn that your life comes first from that scenario in the desert. If I'm holding on to my bottle of water and there's only enough in this bottle for one of us to survive. The reason why Rabbi Akiva says that I have to drink the water is because I am not expected... You have to survive, right? <laughs> right? Is because, right, you're not expected to, to forfeit your life for someone else. Now, how is that different than a case where I go to Tony and I say, Tony, kill Bob, not our Bob, a stranger Bob, kill Bob or I'm going to kill you. According to the logic of what we said with the water, maybe Tony ought to kill Bob. Yet that's not the law. The law is, is that Bob is not allowed to kill 
Uh, Tony is not allowed to kill Bob with a gun. What's the difference between Tony shooting Bob to save himself versus Dr. Winters drinking the water to save himself in the desert? There's a okay, very, there other it's a very the person that's threatened me is the person is trying to get me to kill someone else. So I need to annihilate the person that's trying to get me to do someone else. Let's say no, no. Let's say you cannot annihilate the person that's trying to kill you. I'm. Be, he's behind you. He's the only one I have the right to kill. Right. He's got a gun behind you. You cannot kill him. He. You have a gun well, in I front. Why you why you say that? That's the absolute. Okay, you're not allowed for other. You 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 have one option in There's front a... of you. You can either kill Bob or you can, or you cannot. So over there, the law is very simple in the Torah. The Torah tells us, right? I'll read you from the Gemara. The Gemara says, the Gemara says, um, uh, Tractate Sanhedrin. A guy came over to the to the rabbi of the town, and he said that the governor came over to me, and he said that I have to kill this person, and if I don't kill him, then I'm going to be killed. What do I do? He asked the rabbi, and the rabbi told him, "You have to let yourself be killed. Why? Because me am me ye mar didama didach sumaktve dilma dama dehugaver sumaktve. The essential reason why." You're not allowed to kill someone, even at the expense of your own life, is because we as human beings are never in a position to know the value of the life of a human being. And so when you're killing Bob, Tony, with your gun, even if you're doing it to save yourself, you are on some level making a decision that the life of Bob is worth less than your own and you're not in a position to make that decision. However, when Alan is drinking the water in the desert, he's not actively killing Bob, who's with him in the desert. He's saving himself. You're not obligated to kill yourself to save someone else, but you're not allowed to kill someone else to save yourself. Do you see that difference? Alan is not killing the individual in the desert. Tony would be killing Bob with the gun. There's active killing versus passive killing. Now, one more thing. I just have to get to this point because we're already finished, right? There is a Yerushalmi that says that if a bandit shows up, and you are the leader of an expedition, not a caving expedition, you have a group, and he says, and he points a gun at you, the leader, and he says, give me one of you, or I'll kill all of you. You can't do it. Okay? Are you allowed to give that individual? If you give over that individual, all 20 of you live. If you don't give that individual, all 20 of you will probably die. It's impossible to know what might happen afterwards, but he's threatening that you will all die. So there, there is no dispute, my friends. The Yerushalmi says in no uncertain terms that you are not allowed to give up one human being, even if it's for the sake of many. And it's for the same reason, because you don't know the life of an individual. The fact that there are more people in the equation doesn't change the equation. You still don't know the value of another human being. And okay. no way to betray him. Correct. The end result is is that is like this. You cannot. Okay, so it, it depends. We had many, many, many different scenarios. If he nonchalantly or tried running in and unintentionally got caught up in there, you're not allowed to kill him. That's murder. If he intentionally went in there, he's a road. If he's a pursuer, he's trying to kill you. You blow him up. You, you right? You 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 kill him, right? If he has the cure for cancer, it doesn't change the equation because it's still murder if he went in there unintentionally. You're still printing the Zen of it as the water bottle with this whole scenario because you can't take away my will. And no matter what your parameters are, you cannot take my will away. It is my right and my duty to do everything I can to do to preserve my life. The Torah so doesn't. Even, no, the Torah even doesn't. He has it at my head. You can't eliminate my will. I still can do. Well, everything no. I, can do I the, to eliminate the threat right. rather than kill that Actu person. So the, the Torah actually does say that you have a free will decision. To to make right now. You can either pull the trigger and kill a life, or you cannot pull the trigger and place your place your life in the hands of the Almighty. The Torah wants you to do the latter. The Torah tells you that you do have You're free still will. missing my whole point. What I said <laughs> with regards to the scenario that you had before. When Which you one? Presented somebody with a gun to my head. That's the one I'm talking telling about. Telling me to go murder someone else. He can't take away my will with this gun in my head. You're saying that it, absolute. I either have to choose to uh, uh, murder this other person, Bob, or I choose to be killed. No, my choice is to defend myself. You can't take away that will. In any kind of absolute parameters, I still have my will. 
That's I don't I don't disagree to that. You could try to defend yourself. One thing is certain though, you're not allowed to kill Bob. That's the main exactly. point. The main point I was that trying was to highlight. Never a question. Right. The question was Well no, no. Some people know. might some people might have might have assumed that you are allowed to kill him to save yourself. Not that's your opinion. You're right though. The Torah does say you're not allowed to kill Bob, but not necessarily does everybody but I'm automatically not to surrender my life either. I still have to do everything that I need to do to defend myself. So long as it doesn't involve taking another life. Exactly. So we are in agreement. Yes. Okay. Okay. My friends, thank you so much for joining us today. That was a really great interactive discussion and uh, wishing you